you want the lights on there or off? No, let's keep on. You like? I don't care. Yeah, so you can go to sleep. All right, so we talked about a cam ground piston. And group number one over there, well, I'm just going to assume everybody noticed that you're supposed to measure measure your piston 90 degrees. That's because it's cam ground that way, and that's where the measurements actually correspond to. Let me see, cam ground piston, cross section Y. Oh, I guess I could go back over here. Well, Y, Y, Y. Go over here. Let's see, was there enough room here? Nope, cam, so I'm going to make the one point one here. Um, because rate of expansion, rate of expansion is more with mass, is more with mass, meaning the more mass you have, the more the rate of expansion is. So, okay, and then why again did it, is it cam ground? Why is it, you know, kind of egg shaped? Hey, I, my drawing even looks good. It's kind of narrower this way. So it gives you a better fit, better fit when engine is at temperature. So there's, you know, item number one about why we don't take off or use high power settings on an aircraft that's cold. Because the pistons have not yet fully expanded. And so that's a bad thing. Um, and there was this note, which I thought was kind of interesting. Allow more wear of the piston where thrust is the greatest. So allow more. So it's wider right here. So allows more. I don't know if there's any truth to that. So allow more wear more wear a piston I ran out of room a piston where thrust is greatest where thrust is greatest now when I say thrust you have to remember that you have a pin going through here right but it's shorter and so it's going to rock in that direction and not the other direction. So as, it's going to, as you get the power impulses, it's going to want to kick down a little bit. So that's where the wear is going to be. And that's also where all the molly coating is that I showed you. The molly coating is going to go kind of in this area right here. So there's a molly coating there and the molly coating go barren like that. Hell yeah? Okay. Glad you agree. All right, balance. Balance each piston. Each piston. No, I think I'm on track. H I J. I was cam ground. Each piston. It's the one thing he worries about. Should. I thought that was, thought that was underneath. Yeah. Yeah. Should no, be no, be no more. Then, how much? I have quarter ounce. Different in weight. Different in weight. And I actually wrote where I got that from, um, which is seven grams. I got that from Wild. That's Wild, W-I-L-D, Wild and Crows, K-R-O-E-S. Those are the authors of the textbook I was reading. Although, Although TCM, which is short for continental, states how much? Half ounce. You just had a test question on that half ounce. Um, there was a trick when I was in the industry. So when you were building an engine, you would never order six, quantity six of whatever piston you were using. Because believe it or not, when you actually buy pistons, they always come with Sharpie around the outside of the box, how much they weigh. At the manufacturer, they weigh them and they write it around in Sharpie on the outside, just kind of right there. And uh, if it's an S, they make it look like this. It's really crazy. But uh, <laughs> they do. And, but, there, but, but, there's, but there's there's no S's in, uh, in weight. Each piston should be no more than a quarter ounce different in weight. That's Wild and Crows, although TCM states quarter a uh, half ounce. You good? Yeah. Okay. So I'm talking about my tricks. If you order just six pistons, you're going to oftentimes just get 
six pistons off the shelf and you're going to get them and you go, well, shoot, this one is more than this one and this one. And, you know, they're all different. So I've worked with one guy. He's like, well, you just kind of put the two that are the same opposing, then the next two, the next two. I'm like, well, you know what? There's another way to do it. You order uh, the order by piston part number. So I, I just got to make a part number because I don't remember what they are anymore, like 635201BP. And if you ordered any, any piston, and I made up that part number. I don't know what that goes to. Um, if you order a BP, that's a balance pack. And whoever pulled the part, they knew that. They knew you were doing it for one engine. They would always, and you get them, they'd all be exactly the same. It was pretty cool. So. This is point K. We good with that? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Types of pistons. Types of pistons. Yeah. Why would you order just like one piston off the shelf? Like, would they just send you a random weighted yeah. piston? Yeah. Then would you, what would you do with that? Yeah. Would, would you make it to the right weight? No, because how are you going to know what the other ones are? If you only took off one cylinder, like if I, you know, I've worked in the cylinder shop, I got somebody brought me a cylinder and I could weigh the one that I took off. And like try and, and ask for that one, but it, usually it's be, I just pulled whatever I had in stock that was close, and you just went with that. I know because you don't know at the other side how much carbon does it have on it. You know, was that one replaced before? It's just sadly once you get to that point, you're just repairing stuff. It's not really weighed out. Uh, types of pistons. I'll just tell you what they are, and we'll look at them. Uh, flat. It's not really flat. I mean, it's got a flat spot. Just don't think of it like a pancake. Uh, flat, recessed. They play around a lot. Um, got the cup, piston cup, dome, and truncated. Truncated. Different type of, not <laughs> trunk, <laughs> trunk, whatever. Jeez. All right. Piston cooling nozzles. There we go. Um, did I cover this stuff? Three, four. Measurements, piston clearance. Huh. I don't see this in my notes. We'll talk about it while it's here. All right. So you can make a little drawing for yourself. And let's talk about what we have. Well, obviously the top right here is the piston head or crown. It says that. I just call it the piston head, which is up here at the top. I go to a laser, laser, laser pointer. All right. So we have the, the head up here. So um, I was going to say, people always say, uh, they'll grab the cylinder and they'll say, well, here's the piston head. No, that's a cylinder, number one. And two, it's the whole thing, not a head. So. All right, so we got the head. These are the lands. Top land, one, two, three. It's the part that sticks out. And that's important to know that because when you're talking about measuring pistons, they'll often tell you measure it at the either the top land or the second land or below the first ring or something like that. Where did you guys measure your light coming? Or the skirt. So here's the skirt down here. All of that. Yeah, I like it. If somebody says skirt, I like to know below the piston pin or above it, you know, and be very specific. But so we got a ring groove one, two, three, four. Sometimes you'll see a ring. Well, let's take this back. Aircraft pistons, I don't, boy, a fourth ring here is extremely rare. You're talking about radial, old radial engines before you see four rings. Otherwise, you have one, two, three rings here. And occasionally one down here. Uh -huh. So compression one, compression two, oil. oil, and then you'll have what is called the scraper ring. And I'll tell you more about rings in a little bit. But all right, piston pin boss, I mentioned that a lot. Um, what else? That's really all. It's just the lands, I guess, is the part we didn't really cover, so it's not a big deal. So those are your lands. This land is my land. All right. Here's our different type 
of pistons. I don't know, tripper, <laughs> slipper. This makes no sense. I left it in there. A slipper type, and that's the trunk type. Well, uh, I'm not sure what the difference is. I guess the only thing is that little recess right there, which I see sometimes. It's just got a little recess. Other than that, I don't see a difference in the picture. But anyway, I don't buy this. It's with the little studs at the top of the head. Yeah, like right here? Yeah. I oh. I don't know. <laughs> They're trying to show something that's trying to show recessed head. Yeah, it is. They're trying to show that. I think. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. So is that my phone? Alright. Um Oh, Larry's running to get his phone, so I guess it's his. All right, here we go. Flat, recessed, flat, recessed, cup. Um, that's also recessed. Um, also flat, but that one's got little grooves taken out of it. So that's cupped. That's recessed. Oh yeah. So we got recessed. Cup, uh, flat, flat, truncated, kind of truncated because it's got a little bit truncated. <laughs> and there's your hammy right there. Okay. <laughs> but notice this one, two, three, plus a piston, uh, plus down here at the skirt. So that's rather common. If you look at all of these, though, really, you got one, two, three rings, one, two, three, one, two, three, maybe four, but you have a groove there. One, two, three, one, two, three. There you go, three. That's, there's your light coming. How do I know that's a light coming piston? LW, very good. You got an LW in there. All right, so we'll talk about those in a little bit. Okay, so flat, recess, cup. I don't think, in my opinion, that knowing this is really that big of a deal. I, I don't care. I, I knew great engine mechanics. I thought I was one too. And if you would have brought in a piston and said, name that piston, I'd be like, I'll tell you the part number by memory, but I don't remember what any of this was. I'll tell you what engine it went into, and I'll tell you how to put it together, but I don't remember what the hell, you know, flat cup, recess, down, truncated. Um, it just isn't like a big deal on my, my radar. Um, more important is to put the right piston in the right engine. That's a big, big deal. Not a nail. Other. <laughs> What's that? H I J K. Oh, it's a. Sorry, it is an L. Where in your life have you ever seen an L with a cross on the top? Of it? <laughs> <laughs> is it like with an S thing? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's actually a lowercase on here, so it's trying to be cool. Um, <laughs> points. Newer pistons have um, molly coating. Have a black molly. Isn't that a type of fish? Black molly? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> there, it's that word <laughs> on the skirt. Thank you, Hammer. On the skirt, uh, two um, have newer pistons have steel belts. Steel belts in the piston grooves. in the piston grooves. That was kind of an interesting thing when they did that because I had to change the way we we're doing some cylinders. This caused, this caused um, cylinder choke, choke. 
um, to be reduced. Twelve thousandths, yeah, from point zero one two to about point zero zero four. I'm gonna talk about choke. So, in much the same way, uh, you have a cam ground piston because mass. If we took a look at a cylinder, there we go. Where's the most mass? Uh, this area, and since the piston travels all the way up into this area here, this has more mass. So what do you think they did with that? They brought it in. So what does that mean? Less mass? No, it has more mass up here. Oh. So it's choked. So it goes straight, 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 and it's choked at the very last little bit. So what happens when it heats up and operates? It expands more. And it's straight. Straight. So this expands more than the rest of it. So if it expands more, it ends up being straight. Okay. So you choke. So it's choked when it's cold, mm -hmm. and then as it heats up, it expands more in that area, and the whole thing will expand and it'll be straight. So what I'm saying is, before they had steel belted pistons, apparently the pistons would be a little bit smaller too, and so when everything was cold, it all fit real well. But if you had this 12,000s choke with the steel belted pistons going up there, they kind of got stuck. So you had to take that choke out. You had to go more, a uh, little less, about four thousandths of a choke with the steel belted pistons. It was twelve thousandths of a lot of choke. Of course, it doesn't sound like it because, you know, if you took a piece of paper and rolled it like that, and how much choke is that? You know, if I put a piece of paper very top of the cylinder, like that much of the paper on the very top, how much choke would I have? Eight thousandths, because paper is about four thousandths thick. So. Now you're talking about half the thickness of a paper in. But, you know, you don't think about that when you're building this stuff. You're like, oh, 4,000. Okay, I got it, you know. This seems like a lot when you're doing it. Uh, let me see. What else did I have on here? Removal. Removal. I say always... Remove the cylinder. The cylinder when piston is at at what? Top dead center. Why? Close to prevent um, damage. To damage to rings. Now, if you're going to replace the rings, does it matter? But yeah, because I don't want to break the ring off and shove it down in the, in the engine and have to go find it. That really kind of sucks. Let's talk about piston rings. What is the purpose? Okay, provide a seal. Provide a seal. Prevent excessive oil from getting into combustion chamber. Very good. We're getting into combustion chamber. And conduct heat from heat from piston to cylinder wall. Yeah, it's a good time to talk about something that's here in my mind since I wrote that. All right, purpose. Provide a seal, prevent excessive oil from getting into combustion chamber. All right, how often do you change oil in your car? Once every 2,000 miles. Every 6 to 10, 3, 5. Whenever I think about it. All right, so let's, let's go. 
Ah, so you got 3,000 miles, and how many how many quarts you got in there? Five. Five. We got diesel or? Seven point nine. Okay. So. Seven point nine gasser. Seven point nine quarts of. Oh, yeah. Ninja? Oh, 4.6. Toyota, one URP, V8. Okay. Anyway, so the point I'm getting to is you go to change your oil, and after three, 5,000 miles, and you're down a quart. Does that concern you? Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Or, yeah. Okay. So, I'm trying to think here. So, 3,000 miles. Anybody know three or 5,000? How many hours that is? Third. If you go 59 miles per hour, you'll go 3,000 miles. Well, 59 miles per hour is one, in one minute will get you uh, one so mile. 60 miles. If you go 60 miles an hour, it'll take you 50, 50 hours. The math is 59.5. 59 59.4. That's not 500. It's 59.5. No. You got a mile in one minute. Is it? Yeah. Oh, is it 500 hours? No, what doesn't take into consideration idle time? Let's see. Uh, Hang on. Hang on. It takes 21 hours to drive from here to Oklahoma. Put your mask on. I live. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, I just talked about a whole lot of really good stuff about oil and everything. Oh, oil. Say it again. Oil. Where are we? Piss oil. <laughs> Eight quarts is happy. All right, piston rings. Did I say that yet? Number two, piston rings. Piston rings. I did do that. Piston rings. Provide a seal. Did all those things. Okay. What is it? What are they made out of? Material. They're made out of metal. Next subject. Material. High grade cast iron. I think so, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. So you have compression, most all modern engines, compression, compression, oil. And then down below you'll have what I call the oil control, um, scraper ring. So high grade, compression rings, compression rings may be chrome plated. In fact, most of the time they are. However, I'll put it in big letters, never, never use chrome rings on a chrome cylinder. Why is that? Chrome will eat each other up. No, it'll scrape the chrome off. It'll make a mess. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. It is really bad. So if you have a chrome-plated cylinder, you have plain cast iron rings. If you have a plain cylinder or nitrided cylinder, then you will have chrome-plated rings most of the time. So rings is an area where you can you can easily screw things up pretty dang bad. So the way to keep it straight, honestly, but you know when I was in the industry, Superior Air Parts, um, they were they were wonderful. Before Superior Air Parts, we had to buy everything pretty much from the manufacturer. And sorry, manufacturers, it kind of seemed back then like they didn't care. It's kind of like we're the only game in town, so you can either take it or not. And this is our price, and this is our quality, and sucks for you. And so Superior Air Parts came on the scene, and they made everything nicer. Uh, they had a, a smoother finish to their, like their piston pins and, and their rocker shafts. And, and uh, this is, you can even, uh, there's a, a good, uh, it was a book, you would hate it, but it's called the Sky Ranch Engineering Manual. Who uh, John Schwanner wrote it, and he used to, owned Sacramento Sky Ranch, which was across the street from um, Executive Airport. Very knowledgeable guy. His dad was in aviation. He was like second generation aircraft engineer, and so he thought like an engineer. And so he wrote a book that's it's rather 
dry if you're not into this kind of thing. But, you know, he even talks about how their, their finishes were better and stuff, and I noticed that. And not only that, from the mechanic standpoint, everything they did made life easier. So when you wanted a set of piston rings, you didn't have to go, I want this part number top, this number second. You would just say, look, I have a, you know, an O200 Continental uh, plain, plain bore uh, standard size. Okay, well, that's the uh, um, SA2000-P05 uh, kit with P5 or whatever. So, okay, and so you get the kit, and in it, it would have a ring. It would be printed around a top ring, and then the top number two, and then oil control. And then it would have a little piece of paper about that big that would say, this part number top, this number next, this number third. And then it would have the side clearance and gap. Everything, one little piece of paper. It was just so wonderful. And you would just put them on and it, made, it would say, make sure the writing goes up. And you just put, you put it and it was perfect. Made life easy. Um, and, and, I, and I bring that up to say, it's easy if you didn't have the markings on the rings and you get it, like if you guys took your rings off, let me rephrase that. When I took over and we, we pulled these light combings out of storage and they'd been there for many, many years. And uh, we started, I started teaching this class overhaul that was one of the first things I did is I looked at the rings and not, like, every single engine had them on different and upside down and this one was top and it's like, so it's easy to get them mixed up. If you take a ring off a piston, don't put it back on. Just throw it away. Just buy a new one yeah, out in the field. So types of rings. Um, mostly they go by cross section. And I don't actually want to draw pictures of all of these mostly because you'd be like what the hell are you drawing Kevin oops all right um, some of them have a little you can see right there a little molly inlay into them um, this one's got the chrome on it um, let me see oh there we go a light combing talks a lot about their keystone ring so keystone just means that it's tapered towards the back uh, tapered face scraper. Yeah, you have to look really careful to notice some of this stuff. And it's not necessarily up to you to figure this out, but what you do have to figure out is that is it light combing especially would talk about keystone or half keystone or full wedge. And so you have to understand what that means and look at it. And that just means it tapers towards the inside. And that means that the further it goes in, or say the further out it is, the more gap you're going to have. And that's why it's so critical when you're measuring the side clearance on light combings, especially, that the face is lined up with the edge of the piston, with the land of the piston. Otherwise, you're going to get a false reading. That's what I showed you the other day how to do that. In the book, it shows you you have to put a straight edge and you have to bring it out to the straight edge. And then yeah. you keep your own to yourself over there. So. You your right. own groove. Let's see, we got that. Okay. So it goes by cross section. Um, obviously, rings are split. Rings are split to allow installation. Installation. Um, it's usually a usually a butt joint. A butt joint. And what I mean by a butt joint is it's just, they're square. It's not like a, like as opposed to a ring that was kind of like this, like that, you know, where it had like a, a lap joint. Yeah, so it's just very square, which is nice because that means that if you have not enough gap, that you can actually grind off some of the ring and then increase the gap, which you have to do in the field often. And while you're thinking about that, think about, you know, it's very critical where you measure your rings at, your gap, because if you have choke cylinders, you have to know if you're supposed to measure down the choke or not in the choke, because those are going to be two different readings. If you're supposed to measure it in the choke, let's say it said you're supposed to have like, you know, a uh, 10 thousandths gap, and you measure it at the top, it didn't, and if you slid it all the way down the bottom of the cylinder where it choked, those edges might actually connect and then start to 
force each other out. So that would be a bad, bad thing. So you don't want that. Um, so yeah, it's not uncommon to have to actually grind off some of the ring. I hated doing that. I don't know, it just was a pain in the butt. And you gotta clean up the edges. And it's trial and error. Um, no, that's the worst. There's nothing as bad as drilling on a drill bit. Um, okay, so we have the top types. Things, a cross section, so we'll call this one two, three. I don't know why. Uh, compression. Compression, that is the top, top one or two, could be more. Some radials, I mean, it just seemed like they did six rings. I mean, it was just so many. They were like three or more compression as it went on. So top one or two rings. Those are your compression rings. Um, like I said, maybe chrome plated. If they are chrome plated, what does that mean? They're shiny. Yeah, that's what it just makes it, it makes it look faster. <laughs> <laughs> and if they're not chrome plated, you can go to you can go to Walmart. You can get some chrome plate paint. And just kind of spray it. It'll look good. Yeah. Okay. What? Which? If it's chrome plated, what kind of cylinder does it go into? Plain or nitrided? Never, chrome never chrome on chrome. 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 Alright. I wrote it again. Never use chrome on chrome. Never use chrome on chrome. Alright, so you have the top one or two. Um, in modern pistons, what do you guys have? Three on yours, right? Yeah. Compression, one. Compression, two. And then, oil. And then oil control ring. And use to use to control oil into cylinder. Sort of. So oil drains drains uh, through holes in piston groove. So these rings are actually usually a two, oh, usually a two-piece ring. That's what I wrote next. Look at that. Usually a two-piece ring. So the inner piece is a spiral-wound spring. It's not very springy. It's just spiral-wound. Piece of steel, spiral-wound, and because it's spiral, it's got a hole right through the spirals, right? And so they take like a piece of safety wire about that long and shove it in through this way and shove it in that way, and that connects the two pieces. And so now you have a little split. And I like to put that split 90 degree, or 90, 180 degrees out from the split on the ring itself. Got that? Hopefully. All right. So it's spiraled, can't draw a spiral. And so it's got a little safety wire. So this is the butt there, and then the ring goes on top of it. Oops. Ring goes on top of it, and it has a split on the ring. So the split should be 180 out. So this split is here, this split is there. And then sometimes you have an oil scraper. Well, it's optional. I'm not going to do that. I was going to say optional, but you know what? If the engine manufacturer wants it, it's not optional. So I'm not going to write optional. And that makes it sound like you get to choose if you want it or don't want it. You don't get to choose. If there's a fourth ring, it's um, so an oil scraper down at the bottom. That If it is an oil scraper, it's located, located on skirt. Located on the skirt. Now, the best way I could explain the oil scraper ring this is how it works in my mind an oil scraper ring is like they built the engine and they got all done and said oops oh, we screwed up 
either A, there's not enough oil getting to the top end and we're burning up rings and we're eating up cylinder walls, or we got black smoke coming out of the exhaust. We got too much oil going on here. So, and it depends because you can get one engine that has an oil scraper where it says clearly in directions, top goes like with the rest of them. So, and it's like when you have a piston, the head's right here, that's the top and you should see the writing on all of the rings. Some engines tell you to put that one upside down. So the writing is this way. Some engines, like radial engines, they will say these, the writing goes that way, and these, the writing goes the other way. So these scrape oil into the barrel, and these scrape oil out of the barrel. So you never know. You have to read the directions very carefully. You never assume with an oil scraper which way it's going. Maybe it's scraping it in. Maybe it's scraping it out. You don't know. So maybe, may be used to scrape oil um, in or out or out. So always install per manufacturer instructions. Instructions. And I wrote it again. Some oil, some rings scrape up in oil. Some scrape down or out. So I'm not going to write that again. Oh, it is time to go.